Greetings and welcome to my new calculus channel. My name is John Gabriel and I've decided I'm going to start uploading videos to YouTube again because I get more exposure that way and I'm able to help more people. Uh, even though I don't agree with their policies of censoring material that they don't uh, think is appropriate. So, in this uh, video I'm going to discuss the concept of what is a z-score, a very misunderstood concept. In fact, um, most of the links that I'm going to show you now will demonstrate the point that lecturers of statistics and mathematics don't really understand how to express these things correctly. So let's begin. Now, if you look at uh, a typical explanation, it says, yeah, z-score tells you where the score lies on a normal. That's absolutely rubbish. It doesn't tell you that at all. And you, you can read here, it says a numerical measurement that describes a value's relationship to the mean of a group of values. In fact, in fact, the normal distribution has nothing to do with a mean, by the way, and because a mean normally means arithmetic mean, and an arithmetic mean has nothing to do with the middle of anything. It's really just a leveling term, okay? So uh, most uh, uh, math academics know how to construct an arithmetic mean, but they don't understand it. Uh, and an arithmetic mean is really just that value which uh, a set of values or a group of values would be if they were all re redistributed so that they would be equal. And that's what is an arithmetic mean. And the, the mean in the normal distribution should really be called a median because it has nothing to do with the arithmetic mean. So, for example, uh, in, in any uh, normal distribution, the actual means of these frequencies that lie on the curve are over here and here. Okay, Those are the means. There are usually two arithmetic means. And... Uh, the values along the x-axis are actually the random variables, okay? So the random variable corresponds to a certain frequency. And, <coughs> excuse me, the area under the curve usually gives the probability of a random variable falling into this particular area. Now, normally the uh, z-tables, the z-tables that you deal with, are calculated by... Uh, finding the area from supposedly uh, the tail part, the infinite part on the, the, the left side of the curve up to a particular point. So, for example, if we wanted to find the, the area of this uh, cross surface, it would be uh, finding it from minus infinity up till this particular point. Okay, so... If we look at minus 1.5, minus 1.5, it's 0 0.66681, correct. And if we go to minus 1, minus 1, it's 0 0.15866. Now, the problem uh, with students is that they usually can't use this formula because either they don't know calculus, or if they do, then they need to do what's called numeric integration uh, in the mainstream calculus. In the new calculus, you can find these values a lot easier. And numeric integration could take the form of Simpson's, you know, uh, or trapezoidal method or any other uh, particular numeric integration method. So that's what these z-tables are all about. And they allow people who know very little about mathematics to actually calculate the probability by finding the area under the curve. Okay, so if we go up till zero, then it'll be 1.5, all right? I mean, uh, 0.5, so that's exactly half the area. Now remember the area under such a curve is never equal to one. It's always less than one. Okay? Doesn't matter where you are. Uh, minus uh, 2 would be 0.2275. So this here shows you, and I'll give you a link to the applet, how to find <coughs> the values in the z-table, which I'm not going to waste any time uh, on. Now what is what is the z-variable? So very simply, if you have any other uh, curve, which uh, is a, a normal distribution curve, the only difference between uh, this curve and uh, the one with a standard deviation of 1 is that this curve can be normalized by finding a normalization constant, which I'm not going to go into right here because it's 
something that you cover in a first course of statistics. And it deals with the expectation values. And uh, you can actually normalize this curve here by dividing by this constant over here, right? And so in this case here, uh, if we want a standard deviation of 1, then we can change this, this area here to be exactly the same exactly the same as the area that we see over here, 0 0.68269, uh, right? And of course, we'd have to move the, there we go, the standard, the, the deviation or the interval of the deviation to one, right? And so now this is exactly the same as this curve here. But, so what is a z-score exactly? Actually, a z-score is, is z score. I don't even know why they use that stupid term. It's, it's totally irrelevant. It's actually a, a random variable. And what's happening here is that we're mapping the random variables from this function over to the normal curve, right? So for example, if we were over there, then the median, which is 6 here, goes to 0, which is expected. And if we're over here at 7, <coughs> then 7 goes to 1, right? So it's just a, the Z, the Z, this calculation here just changes the random variable from the curve that is not in standard deviation of 1 to <coughs> a normal distribution curve, <coughs> excuse me, which has a standard deviation of 1. So the Z score is exactly this. It's a random variable which corresponds to a normal distribution with not a mean, but a median value, because it's wrong to call this a mean. It's not a mean, it's a median. Value zero and a standard deviation one. In fact, the, the median doesn't even have to be at zero. Uh, the most important part is that the standard deviation is one, because you can move this curve anywhere else you like. And if you move it over here, it'll overlap the one that has been standardized exactly, okay? Right, you see that? And so if I have to change the standard deviation here, then we'll have a different value. So this now in this case here, most of the readings will fall within this standard deviation of 0 0.5. And of course, the smaller you make it, the higher this number over here will become, right? So it'll be closer to 1. And of course, uh, this dotted blue curve is just the standardization of this red curve. Okay. So... If we say 0.8 here, then we have the exact uh, standardization of this curve. And to get this value to be the same, we would need to change this to be 1, right? Okay, and uh, similarly, if we had to put that at 2 and put that at 2 like that, then values will correspond. They'll be the same. And... Uh, that's pretty much it. That's all I wanted to tell you about. I don't really have much time. There are notes here which I put in for you. They're quite uh, advanced. They tell you why you do all these things. And I'll give you a link to this applet and I'll also put it in the details section. And of course, really, probability, this whole concept comes from the idea of the basic uh, definition of probability, which says it's the number of favorable or expected outcomes to the total number of outcomes. That means if you're throwing a dart at this green circle, uh, the probability of you getting it would be the area of the green circle over the entire area of the square or the rectangle. Okay? So that's all there is to it, and that is what we mean when we find a Z score. It's not, all we're doing is we're finding the corresponding random variable for a distribution with a standard deviation of one, and a median centered at zero. So the median doesn't really matter where it's centered, it can be anywhere as long as the standard deviation is one. And what happens here is we find a normalization constant for this red curve, meaning the square root of two times pi, okay? And uh, we give it a standard deviation of one, and then it's the same as this particular curve. Of course, if I had to leave it at 0 0.8 like that then the values for the probabilities will not correspond exactly 
All right, so uh, zero point, I'd have to bring this to 0 0.8 in this case here so that I can get a more or less the same area as you see under the normally distributed curve. And so that's, that's pretty much it. I'm going to stop here. Uh, my name is John Gabriel. If you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe. Spread the news and donate on my Odyssey channel, either in dollars or credits. I could use the money. Thanks very much. Till next time, goodbye.